Yes, Cyril, have you turned up now? You've written two yes. things in. Do you want to talk yes. about the two points you've put up? Uh, just for, so for the rest of you, I'll just put the link in here. Um, we have on our wiki, we have an entry for the monthly meetings. And one of the things uh, anyone is welcome to do there is just add topics they just like to present or discuss or whatever. Um, and Cyril's added some points there. So you've got the floor, Cyril. Um, it's two projects uh, developed by EPFL uh, in Switzerland. So it is a university uh, in Switzerland at Lausanne. And uh, there is one project which is uh, from uh, which have been in initially made for uh, Geneva State, uh, which is uh, made for uh, building. Uh, uh, how do you say it? Uh, building permits procedure. Does it make sense? Yes. I don't know the English word for it. Duncan, your microphone is mute. Sorry. Um, are you yeah. talking about the uh, the BIM ITED GE yes. project there? Yeah. Right. That's so, the first link there. Yes. So uh, it is a project for a building permit procedure. So many tools have been made uh, uh, for this, and they will uh, develop it. Uh, the, the link uh, I'm, I put on the wiki is uh, specifically for uh, uh, the state of Geneva, but there will be another uh, fork of it, which will be more uh, uh, generic. Um, and the other project is about uh, energy oh, modeling. Yes. So before you keep going, I maybe haven't had enough coffee today. Can you can you just tell me again in simple terms what the purpose and the scope of the project is? I, I don't know it very well because I did not did not work on it. Uh, the idea is to be able to check uh, things you need to check during a, a building permit procedure, uh, like uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, I I don't know exactly, but to to be able to see the volume of the, of the building, to see the uh, area, uh, the uh, trees around it, so many things uh, like this. It is uh, it uses both the GIS and the beam information to 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 make the state able to to check the building uh, using BIM. But exactly, uh, conformity checking to local regulation, yes. Is it more clear? <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking at the diagram now they've got on there. Yeah, okay. but I, I will ask, uh, I, I, I'm not able to to say exactly what it does, but uh, I will ask uh, my colleague which work on it to 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 describe it uh, better before the next uh, month. And I, I see that it uses the XBIM toolkit as well. And am, am I right in um, my impression has always been that .NET uh, applications are hard to port to other platforms. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Right. But it's not .NET. Well, it, it says at the bottom, uh, let's have a look here, that it uses the XBIM toolkit. XBIM, yes. No, no, no. Uh, it says that uh, the XBIM toolkit has been tested, but the main part of, uh, of the API is IFC Open Shell and uh, Geo Geometry Dream. Uh, so it uses Geometry Dream, Jim, which is uh, C Sharp. So, yes, it's .NET, but. Uh, it also uses EFC OpenShell, and maybe in the uh, future it will be only EFC OpenShell. Okay. Uh, yeah, I didn't notice that some of the headings are not in English. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, actually, I understand that you. <laughs> it's in French. Sorry. So the the last title, uh, BIM Server and XBIM Toolkit, That's is under tested, title. Yeah. Yes. 
over recopanand which have been tested so it's only docu for documentation and for uh, history purpose uh, but it's free gs uh, the cfi api mongodb and sys projection and the ifc but shell and geometry dream and the other project is about uh, energy modeling uh, which is uh, actually the most common uh, exchange format which have, has been used uh, for 10 years now is the GBXML, which stands for Green Building uh, Extended Mark Markup Language. Uh, but it has some flaws. And uh, when you have an IFC and you uh, you fill all data for IFC, you want to be able to use IFC also for building energy modeling. And this is the purpose of this project, is to be able to send data uh, to energy modeling software using IFC. And uh, in this specific uh, project, uh, the goal is to be able to uh, process the data required for uh, local standards, uh, for Switzerland standards. Uh, right, using the, okay, using the, the, the way that you have to do the calculations in Switzerland, yeah? Yes, exactly. Yeah. But I will present it, uh, I will present it uh, further uh, during the presentation next month. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I've started a little list here because I've got I've always got some things I want to talk about. But um, what sort of things do people have that they would uh, like to ask or share or discuss today? And then I can just write them down. So if there's a lot of things, we can sort them a little bit. Um, I've been talking to a few people about um, DVG, DXF support and talk to LibreCAD. And I've been having some discussions and mentioned some things on the forum about um, how OSARC maybe could be could be structured. So that's two things we could talk about. And I'd love to hear more about what's happening with building energy modeling, but that's a topic coming up later on. What subjects do people have, if there are any? And what about you guys from outside, the people who are new to OSARC? Have you got some questions about who who we are and what we're trying to do, or or if we manage to communicate that on our website? One issue was about the the logo, I think, right? But, uh, yeah, the logo. Jan uh, wrote. Uh... Yeah, exactly. We we finished the first round, and we could talk about what we do next. You go for it. Doesn't sound like we've got lots of things to talk about. Okay, so I can't share the results because I'm on my cell phone. But if you go, if you share phone, it, what would you like to? You can just show show the results, maybe. Yep. I posted. It'll take me a minute those. to find it. Yeah. So we voted. There were about sixteen people voting, I think, and. Uh, we didn't really agree on how many uh, designs go to the next round, but about three or four sounds about right. Uh, uh, they got the most votes anyway, these three three designs. And the question is what we do next. Uh, Duncan already proposed that we could try different color schemes, which I think is good. Uh, do we do more more variants, more options? I think maybe we can have a, a round, let's say, of uh, of uh, let's say. Uh, do, maybe do we have some uh, strong opinions why we can't take any of those proposals? Because I know somebody mentioned some similarities with some other logos, maybe the similarity with the open uh, association or whatever they're called, open design. 
Association. Yeah. I, I don't think, um, I've, well, yeah, Open Source Initiative, I think they're called. I don't think oh, what okay. we have at the moment uh, looks looks like this. Uh, there was also talk about the Airbnb logo, but w what we have now doesn't really look like them. doesn't look like that either. Um, I have some opinions, of course, but what are people's thoughts about about the next step? Because the let me have a look. The ones that you found, can you see my mouse? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Remind me, number four is one of them, right? Sorry, number four. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This one. So this one here is one of them. I think I should be able to zoom in. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't work very well. But number four was one of them. Ah, look at that. So that was one of the ones that um, we want to keep considering. Yeah. And. Just kind of similar to this one as well, right? Yeah. This is another one. Uh, this one looks uh, like AutoCAD from uh, far. Really? Okay. But. And um, this this one. Do we have the, the, the font types fixed already, or do we still? have to agree on those well um in in, in my opinion let's have a look here sharing the screen in my opinion we should find a find a logo we like and if we need to adjust our fonts to fit the logo then we do that mm -hmm. um because the, 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 i mean I, what i'm thinking the logo needs to work at a lot of different scales and it needs to be able yeah. to be able to be used in different ways and if we need to change it a little bit to fit with a font that we like no big deal. It'd also be um, kind of potentially nice to just find an open source font that would make it easier to develop a short list, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, um, see, Malt has done that. I don't remember the name of the one that he's used. Um, but he, he has, like, he's been through the, um, the osarc.org website and, and uses a specific font there. Um, I spent a while trying to recreate uh, trying to find that and work out which versions he's been using. So, so he's made some choices there which seem to make sense. Although, um, I think I think one of them's a bit too thin. So on a poor screen, it looks terrible. Um, so, shall we prepare maybe different scales of the different options? Like, yeah. What are your thoughts about? Um, like I wrote on the discussion forum there. Um, about sort of because all of the ones that we've got there they're a, a strong design that doesn't need to be any specific color um that's my impression at least so i was thinking that we that the next thing we do and it doesn't need to take very long is we choose the the graphical impression that we think works best and then we look at colors separately after that that's not something we discussed earlier. That's just something I thought when I looked at the ones that we have, particularly because the, what is it? Number seven or whatever, the AutoCAD red looking one, it'd be, it'd be silly Nothing. to not vote for that just because you think it should be a different color. Yeah. To, to, I think it's mainly the color that makes it similar to AutoCAD actually. I like the idea that was proposed a couple months ago is, you know, shortlist some options like we're doing here and then have another two weeks to for a call it's for people to take those designs and modify them tweak them to whatever they think is the best and then have another vote and then make a decision right then and there you know let the let the designer at that point pick the colors right um so we we got kind of the form down now just let people kind of tweak like open source approach let people tweak the designs um, yeah, that, that's, kind of, that's kind of what I meant, like to make different sizes maybe now for the different logos uh, so we can see in which scales they work, if they work in all scales, like yeah, really I, simple simple ones for and so on. No, I like that idea. Just make a call and say, here are the four winners. And the yeah. next stage is like t whoever, whoever wants to take these designs, tweak them to your fancy and... Uh, you know, we'll have a final vote, whatever, in two weeks, and then just pick that one, right, uh, that wins. You could maybe, same voting system you did, or maybe a ranked choice voting, which the system you have is kind of like ranked choice voting, but, you know, but, yeah, I think makes sense to me anyways, that approach. 
but I would still go really black and white as Duncan proposed and then pick the color afterwards so it fits with our color schemes or do you think we'll like change the color schemes according to the logo then when the designer comes with a with a color yeah I guess I, guess I would just let, let it up to the designer because ultimately at the end people are going to vote on it right so <clears throat> okay there's already some direction there's already some indication where it's going right um so the the designer now is going to say, hey, these are my parameters, and I'm just maybe going to tweak the design how I think, and then, you know, let everyone just pick that final final design. The, the, my, my issue with that is that um, that needs to be that needs to be a discussion because designing a color scheme for a logo is not the same as designing a color scheme for a website. So, so if the people who are designing these um, logos and they're all great, you, you can find a good color scheme for a logo that can make it hard to have a color scheme for a website, right? Um, so that's why I, my thought was, if we agree on the graphic and then afterwards um, look at the whole color scheme, because it is a bit of a wider discussion where the logo or the background of the logo or the different elements of the logo would have some colors that would speak to the to the graphics of the website. I don't know if I'm making this too complicated, but I mean, it's it's one thing to pick a great color for a logo, but you need to also think, okay, well, how's that going to work with the other elements we want in our, in our design palette? Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's <clears throat> very important. Does it make sense, Ryan? Yeah, that that's that's fine with me. Yep, I'm kind of on on the fence. So yes, um, so because what because all we all we need to do then is just say, okay, here's the four. You can vote for not more than two of them. Maybe that's the way to make sure that we actually get a winner. <laughs> um, or if we need to do another round, well, you know, it doesn't have to take very long. And then and then once we found that graphic, then we can go back to the 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 great designers we've got and say, okay, this is the graphic that people like. Let's talk about a, a font and a background for a website and what color are links and what color are headers and all that stuff um, to make it all fit together nicely. Yeah, that works. That sounds, that sounds like a plan, eh, Jan? I'm thinking that's good. Okay. Exciting. And if we can get it all done by the 4th of February, um, I, I keep talking about that, which is not a completely random date. That's our birthday. It's when the forum was set up. Okay, so that's a bit tight, I think, but okay. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> Lucas says we should hurry. Yeah, of course we shouldn't hurry, but it would it would be good if we can have a plan that makes that. Always, always good to have a deadline. And if that means ten days voting instead of fourteen, well, I think we're all we're, those of us who are voting are pretty active on the forum. Yeah. Um, yeah, it may, mostly depends on the people voting, on the people designing, but not on the organization. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll see how far we get. Good. And, and, that, and that, maybe and that the we new don't website's have to... ready for the 4th of July or something. Because <laughs> that'd be great to be able to get the same color scheme everywhere. Yeah. It sounds like a plan. What else have we got we want to talk about today? Otherwise, I'll just start getting into one of the things I want to talk about. I'm going to do that then. Um, so I've been I've been talking to uh, the LibreCAD people, and I, I know this is an interesting discussion for lots of people, how much we should focus or not focus on DWG support. Um, but Molt and I, Dion and I, at least, uh, are very much of the opinion that good DVGs so it's called DVG in Denmark. DWG support um, is absolutely critical to in, to bringing legacy projects and most of the current not very BIM projects into an open source um, AEC software workflow. So that's why we've been talking to them and trying to support their work. Uh, and so like for, about four years ago, they released um, LibreCAD uh, 2 as a release candidate 
sorry, LibreCAD 2.2 as a release candidate, which is implementing some new things. And then for four years, no releases. So we talked to them and sort of pushed a little bit and maybe that helped because now they've released a, a release candidate two. So if anybody needs to open and modify a DXF or DVG files, it can't save to DVG. But anybody, if anybody needs to work with those file types, um, absolutely go and try it out so we can make some bug reports and help them get close to a, to a final release of LibreCAD. LibreCAD is a fork of QCAD. Um, and LibreCAD, the interesting thing with LibreCAD is it has a very long and very, I suppose, dedicated would be the word, group of supporters um, who've used it for a long time for laser cutting and engraving um, and CNC work and stuff like that. Um, so, but one of the problems there as well, so that they're also doing uh, LibreCAD version 3, but that's a complete rewrite, and that's GPL v3. Um, but I was talking to one of the developers of that, and one of the things about that is they've it's been designed in a much more modular way, so that so that you can use parts of it inside other software. Um, it's supposed to be an MIT license, but they've somebody fucked up at one stage, so they're trying to work out whether they can go back to the MIT. By removing some code or what to do but so so that uh, sounds interesting um and then there's the libra dwg project from free software foundation which um as far as i can tell is the best free dwg dxf and dxf dwg to SF, svg uh, libraries but because it's um gplv3 it hasn't been hasn't been taken into very many projects, but FreeCAD uh, FreeCAD version point uh, one nine in the in the recent app images that uses LibreCAD sorry Libra DWG. So again, if you want to test the um, the quality of DWG support in FreeCAD, specifically the Libra DWG project, try importing some two D. DWG files in a, in a recent version of FreeCAD. Um, so that's for anyone who agrees with me that high quality DXF and DWG support is important. That's some but, of the things that we can do to help improve that. Has there been any development on DXF import for, for Blender? Because that's pretty old, right? The importer for Blender. I haven't got round to looking into that. I was wondering that too, but because Blender Blender is also GPL v three, isn't it? As far as I know, yes. Yeah. So I, I haven't looked into why they, but the, the thing with Libra DWG from Free Software Foundation is they still regard it as uh, I think they regard it as better software now. So they're saying that the API is pretty much stable. Um, which of course is not stable enough for everybody. So, but yeah. So if anybody knows who to talk to at Blender to find out, because if, if Blender started looking at it and discovered that it's a lot better than what they have, but maybe a bit unstable, they have the resources to fix that problem. Um, and I know the um, uh, Rainer, I think is his name, the guy who's, who's working on it, is doing work on, and now we're getting out of the area that I actually understand, but he's working on ACES support so that um, DWG 3D files uh, can can start be start being a reality. And as I understand it, that's a that's a big task, and it's going to take a lot of work. Yeah, I didn't see any point there, but uh, also I was wondering in the discussion what with IFC to the IFC. Can, can we not just use that in the future? I think we need to, we actually need to have a presentation from the people who know what's going on there because we've got a few people like Ryan, you know a little bit about what's going on in IFC 2D and, and Dion knows some things and I see a few other, other people talking about 2D and STEP. We really need to have an organized discussion about 
what, what way this should be heading. And, and, and I read somewhere that step isn't even, isn't e I mean, that step is a proprietary, it's openly documented, but is actually a proprietary format, which confuses me a little bit. But apparently there has earlier been um, a project for, for having 2D information in step files. I didn't quite understand the details, but. So I can probably shed a bit of light on that. Um, the step standard, uh, as far as I'm aware, the spec is paywalled. Um, although if anybody is interested, I found a free version just floating online on this step website. It's, it's not the official one, but I can't tell the difference between that and the official one. You've got really bad um, um, the, connection mold, so if you can do anything about it, that'd be great. Um, I'll try maybe post text. That might be better. Um, in terms of 2D, uh, in, uh, I step had a specification related to, to 2D drawings or 2D annotation side of it. Um, I see then was inspired by that and took a lot of those entities and implemented it in IFC with their own little flavor on top. And then Building Smart removed a bunch of that, uh, uh, which is nice. But the few that they left is enough to uh, do a bunch of things. So um, that's the current state of affairs. The biggest difference, I guess, between this and, um, and, and the DWG side of things is that IFC tries to to encourage uh, 2D annotation to be linked to BIM objects because it is inherently a, a BIM-based uh, uh, schema. Whereas in the CAD world, you don't need to do that, right? You can just have lines on layers. So it, it's really not so much a technical limitation as it is a... Um, just the, the whole approach. Can people hear what I'm saying? Yeah, we can hear you. It's just a bit hard. We can hear you. Yeah, Ryan, yeah, I think so as long it, as it is possible. as long as Dion's camera is turned off, I don't think we can do much about the quality. Well, I was just curious if like uh just I actually don't even know if like having other people have video streams uh, you know affects the audio somehow. I I have no clue, but just a question. <laughs> Yeah, so, oh, oh, thanks, guys. Hopefully that's better. Um, I I guess what I'm saying is that it, it's just a, the whole paradigm on how you create 2D data, that if you wanted to switch to using IFC as a format, you theoretically could. You can use IFC annotation um, as the entity and just forego any other semantic BIM data. And you can use NCAD layers does exist. The next issue is support, which is why right now, um, <clears throat> just as a realist, I'm saying, you know, we, 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 DWG, DXF is still, unfortunately, what people can use because there is no program out there which fully supports the annotation data because there's two parts of it. There is the, the just the 2D line work, and then there is also things like styles and hash patterns, which totally gets uh, lost or not fully interpreted. So I don't have a solution to it. Um, well, there is a solution to it, which is somebody needs to sit down and build a viewer. Uh, and keep in mind that most authoring applications do a very bad job of exporting this. I think the best one I've seen is Archicad. They actually export a lot of that 2D data out, uh, better than Blender BIM, actually. Um, but just the, the state of the industry is so poor, they're struggling already with basic, with 3D IFCs. I mean, getting them to do 2D. I can't believe I'm saying saying this, but they're doing a better job with 3D than 2D. But um, that's the that's the state of the industry. Does that mean then that the the way forward is to um, is is to focus on IFC as a 3D format and extract drawings from it? I mean, but the, my my issue with that though is. 
how do you store your 2D semantic knowledge? Um, we've talked about contexts and stuff in the oh, IFC can, file. Correct. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, if, if I think that's a good approach, is to say, look, um, just really push IFC with 2D symbology uh, embedded in it for for things which do need 2D symbology. I think that's a good thing to push for the future, personally. Can, can IFC but, uh, can IFC files contain SVG? information like like for the aspects of 2d that ifc isn't born to deal with can it function as a container for for the stuff that it can't deal with natively uh i don't think ifc is a container of anything really um but it, when it comes to 2d i think ifc can um contain everything that it needs to like there's not too many Maybe I'm I'm speaking out of turn here, but I don't think there's much in 2D that it doesn't already support. There are a few things which Building Smart took out, like semantic classes for dimensions and like things like radial dimensions and all that. But with the improvements happening in the Blenderbim construction docs um, discussion, Thomas and I, who has also been working on 2D documentation from IFCs has been agreeing on uh, standards or conventions to replace, to, to, to achieve it. So sh short answer is, I think IFC can achieve pretty much everything that you'd expect from a 2D drawing. It just takes a bit of work to standardize um, with the people who are actually implementing this stuff. I think that would be a, an interesting discussion. I love that you're talking... Um with Thomas about kind of developing a, a standard, it'd be nice to get, you know, maybe Antonio into the conversation as well and on adopting that burgeoning standard that you're, you're looking to do, or at least have Antonio uh, understand the discussion or where which, it's going. Which Antonio are we talking about? Uh, the IFC JS, Antonio that just gave right, the one right here. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause I By think, the way, was, you know, oh, go ahead. Uh, just a heads up to everybody in the room that any of the stuff being done on Blender BIM, and especially now with the, with the whole rewrite, is agnostic of Blender. So there's a huge amount of code sharing which could theoretically happen between Blender BIM, FreeCAD, ISCJS. Uh, even if I, I, I know that ISCJS uh, sometimes cannot do a lot of code sharing because they, they have to process everything client side. But um, on the, if they do choose to implement some backend stuff like SVG generation or, or slicing, which maybe is not so good to do on the uh, actually, client side. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, actually, just to clarify, in the yeah, uh, because it's JavaScript. Yes, you can make everything client side, but also you can make everything in Node, which means that you can bring your JavaScript co code to the backend and make everything in the servers or directly Correct. in the native application. So you can use any any framework or library of the JavaScript ecosystem, which means that you can actually make an application in any platform you want. You want. Yeah, so maybe, um, so for example, the, the drawing generation stuff is pure C++. So if some Node.js bindings were generated for it, uh, that would allow us to share code on that aspect as well. Just a thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Right now, uh, regarding IFC JS, uh, our main goal in the in the short term is to finish everything to be able to show almost any IFC two three. But yeah, um, from my side, I'm completely open to. To make any collaboration, so perhaps if if there's perhaps we can I don't know um, if there are specific proposals we can write them down and see how can we actually in the detail of the code how can we collaborate? Yeah, I think the uh, just just really quickly in the call because this is actually a longer discussion that we should take offline um, mm -hmm. or online rather. <laughs> 
Just as um, long as you do talk to each other, the rest of us are happy. Yeah. Uh, just a quick one. Maybe I, 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 I haven't looked at the ICGS code much, but just make sure that you're implementing context, representation context in the viewer somewhere. Because I know that uh, sometimes when people first implement IFC somewhere, they forget to take into account context and they treat it just as, oh, we'll just display this geometry. Um, and that, and you know that 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 that's good for a for a quick geometry viewer, but it really hurts them in the long term if they want to really support what IFC can offer. So I certainly yeah. made that mistake when I first did Blender. FreeCAD made that mistake too. So it's just just a heads up. Yeah, um, we parse them, but we are not actually applying them to the geometry yet. But uh, I mean, this is something we left for the end because we consider more critical being able to read all the types of geometries. Agree, and yeah. So long as they're the somewhere in the code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but that's on the on the roadmap. Hey, by the way, one if more... anyone's interested. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, go on. Go on. One more thing for a 2D uh, discussion. Are we talking only about the model uh, 2D lines or uh, geometry? Or because my my concern is to detail drawings which are mostly done uh, in 2D and I think it's necessary or the only way to do them. And that's why I'm talking about 2D in IFC because a lot of people uh, adopting IFCs are uh, concerned about detail drawings. Yes, so to do 2D detail drawings, uh, there's, a f there's two approaches. One approach you can p draw as purely um, just 2D with no semantic data, kind of like old school style. And that's totally possible. So instead of assigning a wall or let's say you're doing a wall junction detail, instead of assigning a wall and a covering and uh, let, let's say members for steel members, you would just create objects that say they are IFC annotation and only have a 2D representation and nothing else. So that's how you would do it in IFC. So can you make can you do arbitrary two D work and then call it an IFC annotation? Correct. Yes. And uh, so some of those, if, if somebody wants to see some examples of that, on the GitHub issue for um, construction drawing improvement in IFC Open Show and Blender BIM, for example, there's some two D fills like uh, earth fills, which very often happens in drawings because the cut just doesn't quite work so well or or just um, fills over parts of drawings. Those kind of hacks, you know, that people do on drawings, th those are just arbitrary 2D elements. And I think in the latest um, Blender BIM version, there is now an explicit button that lets you generate those arbitrary 2D things. Cool. There's plenty of stuff to keep talking about there. Quick one rewinding to the DWG DXF. Uh, I didn't fully understand. Are, are you saying that Blender can start using Libra DWG? Like, was that license issue solved? I, I didn't quite get that. Well, no, it was just, if I remember correctly, Blender is GPLv3 and Libra DVG is also GPLv3. But uh, I may remember wrongly. I think Blender is GPLv2 or later. GPLv2 plus, yes, that's right. So I think that means that they're not allowed to bundle Libra DWG because then they would have to bundle the whole Blender as um, Blender GPL3. Yeah. But I, but if somebody creates an add-on, then I think that works. That's what I'm not a liar. Mm. <laughs> if anybody is interested, I have compiled uh, LibreCAD three. In fact, literally just now, like five minutes ago. So I can share my screen, and people can take a look at the state of uh, LibreCAD three. If anybody's interested. Well, you know I'm interested, but I don't know if there's more people that are interested than us two. Please sure. do. All right. That's, that's a few other people. So I'm going to share my screen here. Hopefully Sorry, I haven't heard of LibreCAD. What's the relationship between LibreCAD and FreeCAD? Are they related? No, LibreCAD's pure 2D. 
Right. So, so, so just to give you an idea, this is LibreCAD 2, uh, which I'm showing on my screen. Hopefully you can see it. So this is just pure 2D, kind of like AutoCAD. Um, and the this was a fork off QCAD. And then after a disagreement around implementing CAM support. And LibreCAD 3 is a total rewrite. So this is LibreCAD 2. But if, then if I opened up, I don't have QCAD on it. Or maybe I do somewhere. But uh, QCAD and LibreCAD look very, very similar. Cause that's because LibreCAD is a fork of QCAD. But if I close this guy and open up the one I just compiled, this is what three looks like and you can see it's it's very much a work in progress but it also looks totally different that's because it's a complete rewrite so um i'm kind of new to this too so i'm just gonna like click on a f I've, I've noticed that see when i click that it sort of goes back to the origin it's it's i assume that's part of their debugging or something um they they have some snaps but it's there's only four so it seems to be missing a lot but i noticed that some of these do more than one thing. So if, see, this one seems to be sort of extrapolating off the end of that. So I don't know if that's kind of like part of their new smart snaps thing that AutoCAD has that they're trying to do. Um, I can't seem to draw any orthogonal lines. So maybe maybe it's missing. It seems like a very strange interface. Pers this is just me giving my personal first impressions on it. Like I don't, like this just doesn't seem right to be down here. My understanding from talking to um, Reese was that it's it's a lot like it's a lot more modular than LibreCAD two. So all that kind of stuff like do I like the interface or things like that should be um, much easier to, to fix because things are not like and yeah uh, okay this is a public recording. Um, <laughs> That's okay. It's, it sounds like the, the, the approach, <laughs> the approach to LibreCAD three is is much more flexible and and will um, sounds like it'll lend itself to a, a really good development um, life. Yes, uh, I would like to correct about uh, Blender license. It is bundled as GPL free, as stated on the website. Oh, Blender is GPL3 now? No, not the code, source code, but the release. The binaries are released at GP, as GPL3. So you can ah, bundle okay. with the uh, last <coughs> paragraph. Look at the last paragraph. OK, OK. All right, cool. Didn't know that. I was reading so, Wikipedia. Some of the code are uh, under GPL2. Some of the code are under MIT, APH, and uh, over license, actually. I'm sure people have different opinions about this as well, as always, with anything that comes from Autodesk. But given that the Libra DWG guy is working on ACES for 3D DWG implementations, it would be incredible if we had a plugin to Blender that could make use of whatever he's done so far so that people can actually test it out and uh, and with real files and stuff. So that's just a wish I'm sending out into the code verse. Anyway, hope everyone can see kind of just like the strange state of LibreCAD 3 right now. Um, but yeah, I Do guess you know, people want to. Yeah. Should there be any functional differences or is it mostly the coding that's been changed? Because it seems to function pretty much exactly the same as uh, LibreCAD 2. Well, as 2D CAD, there are only so many different ways of implementing 2D CAD. Paper space? Ah, good. Because th like, that's, that's one of the yeah, big yeah. problems. Yeah, that's one of the big problems with LibreCAD and um, QCAD Community Edition. So like we we don't currently, as far as I've been able to tell, there's no implementation of uh, DWG that that has paper space sorted out. Yeah, and the other thing I was missing was the XREFs. Yeah. So there are some there are still some really 
big holes in um, DWG implementation, but um, we need to get a we need to support a product getting in front of people so they use it and um, make these requests. I love those wiggly lines; they're so cool. I just love to understand the mathematics behind them. Okay, as exciting as that is, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I could keep it going. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, you'll have to help me get it um, compiled so we can play with it. I want to try. Yeah. Um, I did, have we got any other comments on the whole DXF, DWG, SVG, 2D, IFC drawings uh, discussion, which we'll be picking up every time we talk? Not for now. SVG Maybe one more question. All the way. Sorry, what was it, Ryan? I said SVG is all the way. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't it be great if we could just get everything over to SVG instead? Go <laughs> ahead, Jan. Well, well, we can. <laughs> In time. It's just a beautiful open standard, you know, with DWG and DXF. It's just a murky licensing approach that it's 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 scary to get into. Just whatever. I wanted to state that. Yeah, I was just wondering uh, what's the opinion on the converter from DWG to DXF from Autodesk, because they're providing free free uh, converter which converts any DWG kind of officially into DXF. You mean the ODA one, not the AutoCAD one? No, I meant the Autodesk one. Yeah, they also have a converter. That's correct. Oh, okay. And yeah. that should actually support the latest version completely with all the, uh, with everything. So I was wondering if you just yeah. don't want to use it because it's from Autodesk or do you have any other issues with it? Well, it's not open source, so we don't actually know what it's doing under the hood. That's that's always one issue, right? Well, neither is the and it will idea. only and it will only run on Windows. I don't know if anybody's tried to run it on Wine. I, probably no one could be bothered, but because the ODA the ODA libraries they are um, they'll run on anything. They're probably also okay. also online. ODA What's this converter. I can't seem to find it online. The DVD tr DVG True View from Autodesk is, a, is also a converter. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Just be glad that you that you don't have to deal with those things, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Every time AutoCAD comes out in a new version, everyone has to start learning where those converters are because they start getting sent files in a format they haven't got. <sighs> yeah, but this one seems for me to work quite well, actually. I was really happy when I found it. And it does batch conversions, right? So you can yeah. give it a whole, yeah. Anyway, that was the DVD, uh, DXF, blah, blah, blah discussion. Um, I've, I've got some questions I want to ask about um, possible ways of organizing OSR. But um, does anyone else have a different topic they want to slide in before that? No, you're too slow. My turn. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I've been thinking about a good way of um, uh, sort of sort of starting OSR as as a legal entity and foundations and stuff we've been talking about. And I was reading a bit more on um, OSGO's website, um, and also thinking about some of the projects that we know the open source projects that are. And an open source license, but they don't really have a community around them. Um, QCAD Community of Edition is maybe an example of that. Um, so I was looking a bit more around their website, um, and I started thinking that one thing that could be really good, and I've made a post on the on the discussion forum about this, is maybe a way to start, and maybe the time to start as well is when we've got like a list of core mature projects and a list of stable corporate members who are willing to pay something, doesn't have to be a lot initially. Um, and individual members, we've, we've, we've pretty much got, like we've got that list of supporters, so people have started looking at that. Um, so, so I guess really I'm just asking if people want to think about whether that 
makes sense, whether that's the sort of structure that would serve the purposes that we're we're looking at, um, and what what projects and what organisations, uh, sorry, what projects and what corporations, and maybe also academic. I haven't quite worked out that, but um, would be appropriate. You can see in my post, I've come with some suggestions, and even even just with the list there, we we can quickly get up to six or seven companies that I think would very happily say, yeah, well, here's a little bit of money. We'd love to have our logo on your website and we'd love to put your logo on our website. Um, yeah, so that's just some thoughts I had. Um, yeah, that's part of the general discussion of we, we need to be a, a, a few more people who want to spend time on that sort of thing so that we can start some kind of um, organization. That was all. If nobody has any comments, then... Um... So I think g generically, yes, I think it's a, a great idea to, to start something. Uh, what was, I think we were looking into Open Collective, right, is kind of something to monkey around on. Um, yeah. Yeah. Has there been any kind of, I know someone started something, but I didn't see any kind of um, action on it. Or yeah, Dion, how'd that go? Well, there's two. <clears throat> there's one I started for OS Arch, and then <clears throat> it stopped when it said, okay, you need to choose a fiscal host. So there's three options. So before you go any further on OS, on OS Collective, op Open Collective, sorry, um, you need to choose how you manage your money. And that's where I kind of stopped. There's three options. Number one, you manage it yourself with your personal bank account. Number two, uh, you create a fiscal host organization. And I think that's kind of like a legal entity. Um, or option three, you find an existing legal entity that you that acts as an umbrella and you just go underneath them. So in option three, the, there is an option, if you are an open source project yourself, you just say, here is my GitHub repo, and it will automatically check the number of stars you have. And I think it's a, if it's above 100 stars, you just get automatically approved, and you just you start collecting money tomorrow. And there's a 10% um, fee every time somebody sends you money. And that is a US registered company uh, that acts as a fiscal host. Cyril brought up the issue of whether this, whether that means that um, you know what what's the implication of it being registered in the U.S. You know, is is that just them holding your money, or does it have a wider implication? I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. Um, something to look into. Uh, but I'm just telling you that that option does exist. Now, just before Christmas, there was some guy who said, "Hey, I want to give a thousand bucks to um, Blender BIM." But it has to be a US 501C, which is kind of like their their designation for non for profits. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different subcategories of a 501C. But he just said, look, as long as a 501C, I want to give a thousand bucks to it. So I thought, you know, it'd be sad to miss out on a thousand bucks. And he wants to give it before the end of the year, right? So we had five days to set up a company and everything. So we said, okay, we don't want to miss out on a thousand bucks. How do we set up a 501C before the end of the year? And so uh, because this was kind of like a rash, you know, rapidly done thing, um, I set one up called the Open Source BIM, which is very generic and not OS Arch, uh, just as a stopgap because I didn't want to step on anybody's toes. And uh, we got that funding. And, um, and then another guy took a look at it and put in another thousand dollars. So now there's, and then somebody else looked at it and put in a hundred bucks. So now we've got roughly around $2,000 uh, sitting there uh, that we haven't done anything with yet. Uh, but just telling you that there is this other open collective account, which I'll find. Um, and, and just saying that, Hey, you know, this thing was set up and it actually does already have, uh, two 1,000 one-time funds, and somebody has pledged, I think, a recurring $100 every month, but I, I don't fully understand. Uh, I, I think. I, I guess I'll find out next month. 
So did you have to tie that account to um, the open IFC shell GitHub? Is that kind of how? Correct. That was the requirement. It? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which so, is why it's kind of tricky for OS Arch, right? Because OS Arch doesn't have its own GitHub. Right. Right. Yeah. What, what did you say? How many stars automatically? It, it can be a hundred stars. I'm so. Sorry. FreeCAD should be able to do it. And, and there's some big names under Open Collective. So clearly, a lot of people have looked at it and said it's it's, it's a no issue for them. But, uh, I'm, but I'm not saying that that's a justification. I'm just saying that at least it's not a like an unknown type of thing where you're a bit uncertain whether your money's going to suddenly disappear tomorrow. Right. Well, I think it's a good idea to figure out some way to try to set up something on Open Collective. Uh, whether that's you know through an existing github project or whether we just you know do some more paperwork um to figure that out um i think it makes sense i you know, the whole 10 percent that seems pretty steep uh margins though <laughs> for the service but uh, i've got a comparison um <clears throat> let me see but I mean, even just Patreon and PayPal, they all take a, a, a chunk and they don't offer actually anything except a thing you can click on. Whereas Open Source Collective, they, um, the, sorry, op, Open Collective, of which Open Source Collective is a, a, a piece, um, they have a whole lot of fiscal tools and transparency and, yeah. So so they, so they would be able to provide... Um, and I mean, okay, it's an, it would be an interim solution, right? Probably, um, but they would they would be able to have uh, all that paperwork that that none of us want to do. I'm guessing, I don't want to, you know, all of that paperwork required to be transparent about what's happening with the money. Um, they make that easy. Yeah. By the way, I've, when somebody asked for, I've got a bunch of money, I want to give it to Blender BIM. I responded with, you know, things are kind of floating right now, but here are four options. And I, and I got some pros and cons. So there's GitHub sponsors. Uh, the pros about GitHub sponsors is that there's actually zero fees um, for individuals only. And that's, that's the con. Uh, you can only support an, in, an individual. There's also no transparency around how much funds are collected and how the funds are spent. Uh, Libra pay is another option where the fees are very low. They're generally less than 5%. This is from their website. Uh, well, they don't have does... their own fees, so it's only it's only the bank transfer fees. Correct, correct. So I think GitHub sponsors kind of, like maybe GitHub absorbs that cost. I don't know. By the way, GitHub sponsors for Teams, I think right now it's also zero fees, but in the future, I read on a blog post, on a GitHub blog post that they will it will become 10%, and that's in the future. But right now, during their beta phase or something, it's it's still zero fees. So Libra Pay, you can both do individual and um, and fund, but the fund is kind of like not a real fund. It's more just like it just divvies up to the individuals, from my understanding. Uh, it only supports recurring donations, um, which may be a bad thing for somebody who wants to contribute. Same with GitHub sponsors, also only supports recurring donations. Uh, it is transparent on how much funds are collected, but not transparent on how the funds are spent. Uh, there's a bounty source, which is really good because it targets a very specific issue. Um, and it's very transparent about the funds raised and exactly what you're spending it on. But I think there is a 10% withdrawal fee. Uh, and, and on top of that, depending on the transaction method used, there is an additional fee on the withdrawal method. Um, and then you have the open collective, which if you choose the 501, the, 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 op, the open source fiscal host, that's 10% fee. Uh, that, but if you create your own fiscal hosts, I assume that varies. And I have no idea the range within it varies. Anyway, that's, that's four different options. Um, and uh, sorry, the last one is also very transparent on both funds collected and funds, um, uh, how the funds are being spent and also seems to be the only one which really supports an actual company, whereas the first three are more directing to individuals. Unless GitHub Teams, sorry, no, I take that back. Yeah, GitHub Teams should support a group. 
Anyway, again, I'm not a lawyer. I'll, pay, I'll paste my pros and cons that I've uh, read up online on the forums, and maybe that will help. So dumb question, you know, of those and kind of the research I've done, I, I'm leaning towards, I would lean towards Open Collective. Uh, you know, it's an open source backend as well. Uh, dumb question, how hard would it be for OSRs to create a GitLab repo? We have a couple already. Um, or on GitHub or whatever, they just create a generic repo. Just so that we can and all star it. <laughs> well, exactly. exactly. <laughs> but, you know, our intentions are, are good, yeah, you know. So if that's the only thing, and that, that would seem to be the quickest way of doing it.